Okay, folks, I hope you have those tops and those bags ready for this one. Our next guest boldly asks, are we living in a simulation? Avi Barzeev has been on the leading edge of AR and VR development for close to 25 years, working on projects such as the Microsoft HoloLens, Second Life, Google Earth, and VR experiences at Disney. Here to question your reality, please join me in welcoming Avi Barzeev to the stage. All right, I can barely see you. Well, let's start with the show of hands on this question. Who thinks it's at least possible that what we see, perceive, hear, feel is not real? That we're living in a kind of a dream world or a simulation? So at least half of you, just for reference. All right, let's see if we can spend the next 15 minutes or so trying to answer this question together. First of all, do any other animals wonder about this question, what the reality is real? Do you notice that in any of your pets or seen animals or documentaries? I, I haven't. I have not noticed this at all. Although some people think, perhaps, there are hyper-intelligent mice out there studying us. That's a possibility. I like to believe that might be true. But even the smartest animals tend to say, I can't answer that question. How about some nice, tasty fish instead? Let's not worry about it. But today, we're going to worry about it. We're going to see if we can get to it. Different people approach the question differently. Philosophers ponder, what are we not seeing? What else is there? And this is, if you're not familiar with Plato's cave, this is a depiction of Plato's cave. We'll get back to this a little more later. It's a very important concept. People who are religious tend to believe our world is not the most real. There is some afterlife in most religions that is more real than this one. In some, this is just a test. Uh, in others, the afterlife is a reward. In mine, I, I'd like to imagine I might be greeted by, uh, by this fellow. Uh, it would be very clever. The scientists look for evidence in nature. They try to see, test hypotheses and see what they can find. There's an interesting paper probing whether, uh, whether nature might actually be a simulation. This is, this is science going on. It's real stuff. Computer scientists, more like myself, uh, look for pot potential computational problems, logic errors. This is a, a famous XKCD. Uh, you have a second, you might read it. Um, thinking about the question of, uh, if we were living in a computer, might there be errors that we find? So normal people follow experts. We read, uh, we read papers, we read articles that tell us what the author thinks might be the nature of reality. And you might watch movies. There might be uh, gurus. There might be novelists. There might be people who make movies that we listen to. There might even be idiots giving speeches out here that we all give credit to. And the truth is, none of us really know. The truth is, there is no child. There is no bald, wise child who has all the answers who's going to tell us, because nobody really knows. And maybe that's by design. Maybe we're not allowed to know. Certainly, there's some evidence against physical reality, some, some scientific evidence people can talk about and write about. There's all these things. I, you know, I could talk about these. I could take up your time writing, talking about them. But the truth is, I'm not an expert in these things. I have to trust what a physicist tells me. Uh, the latest one is this idea that there's a high probability that civilizations evolve to the point where they can make ideal simulations. So the chances that we're in one are pretty good. Um, I say, I can't prove any of this. So I'm just going to ignore that. All right? Let's just leave that on its side. Because you have to consider the possibility that even if all these weird things about reality are true and they're tip-offs, reality could actually be a machine designed to explain its own existence. If we're living in a simulation, why would it be so easy to find out? Maybe reality is there to keep pulling the wool over our eyes, to keep hiding itself. And every time we ask a question, think about it. A long time ago, we believed in pantheons of gods. Various religions had different versions of this. We believe these gods reflected our inner psyche. Psyche was one of them. And uh, that was our view of the world. Really, a very internal view made real, manifest. And then for a long time, we held on to the Earth as the center of the universe. And we've become a little less egocentric in our view of reality. 
But now things are so small or so distant that we need to test to prove. String theory was so hard to test because the scales are so small that we can't even get there. So maybe this is evidence that reality is changing as we, as we evolve, as we think about it. Reality is actually making up the answers to the questions that we ask and providing us with the next best answer that we can't yet test or prove. Because if you think about it, wouldn't it really suck if we actually could prove that we were living in a simulation? Because then what? All right, now we're living in a simulation. How do we get out? That's not so easy. That's a whole other question, right? I'd rather focus on that question. In fact, there's a better question to ask, which is, what questions can we even imagine? Because if reality is trying to pull the wool over our eyes, then the chances are whatever the right question to ask is, we can't even get it. We can't even pull it out because that might be the key question to ask. So what can't we ask? Well, I'm going to try. For example, what if time itself isn't real? There are some physicists who believe things like configuration theory, uh, very interesting approaches that perhaps time isn't real. It could be a string of instances, or there could be only one instance, one instant in time, this one. Everything we all remember about the past could be fabricated in that instant in order to make us feel that it was all real. And so everything we find could be completely fabricated in order to support the present instant in time. Of course, time could also be eternal, in which all instances exist. That's another interesting way to look at it. I don't think we understand time very well. I've used this phrase, that's two hours of my life I'll never get back. When do we ever get those two hours back? Even if it was a good movie, we wouldn't, wouldn't get it back. It's just not the way it works. So let's, let's erase some of the possibilities. There's a lot of ways to slice and dice this, but I like this one. So imagine there's a set of three questions. Is our perceived universe real? It's a good question. Are we real? It's a very good question. We may not be. We may just think we are. And is there some sort of transcendence? Is there an outer verse outside of our universe in which houses our universe that is more real than this is? Essentially a simulation. So take these three questions. You wind up with eight possibilities. One of the most common ones is dualism, religious kind of view. This world is relatively real, but there's a realer world outside. Uh, that we graduate to when we're done. And there's also the physical reality. The, this is it. This is all there is. We die, we're gone. That's certainly e equally plausible. And then there's a whole bunch of others. There's quantum reality that says the physical world is manifestation of the quantum world. We don't understand it. There's the idea that we're not real, but the universe is, in case we're kind of replicants. Uh, we may not be real, but maybe we can become real. Uh, that's the sort of Pinocchio theory I don't hear too many people talk about. Uh, there's nihilism. None of it's real. Uh, universal mind, we're all the dream in the mind of, of, of some greater being. And then the one we're going to focus on is just simulated reality, answering the question of, are we living in a simulation? But this gets pretty complicated pretty fast. So you may be tempted to just give up and eat some fish. It's pretty hard. So a better idea, instead of trying to answer the question directly, let's start with the assumption that our universe is a simulation and see what could we look for that would be a tip-off that's not those physical reality questions. So I've done a bunch of simulations in my time. Any rational simulation should have a purpose, right? If it doesn't have a purpose, by my definition, it's not a simulation. It should have some rules and initial conditions that you want to test. Reality is essentially data. And there should be some results. Otherwise, why bother making a simulation? Even if you're a masochist and you want to torture your little virtual sims, you still want to see it, right? You still want to know what happened. Otherwise, if it's a black box, you don't want to, why would you even take the time to do it? So Carl Sims, brilliant guy, decades ago, created virtual creatures inside of, a, inside of a simulation in order to test to see what would happen. And of the very interesting things evolved. These are basically boxes with hinges that, were, that could evolve and breed and, and, and were uh, fitness tested. I, I had to go email him to get this. But I remembered hearing about there's some interesting creatures that took advantage of bugs in the simulator. So what happened was uh, the first test was a finish line in which the, the, the creatures had to make it crawl. He wanted them to crawl. Well, what they learned to do was to basically evolve to be tall so they could just fall over. That's just exploiting the rules of the game in order to win. And another one took advantage of some lazy physics code in order to vibrate back and forth really quickly to build up energy until they could flip into the air. That should not be possible. So one of the ways we might look for whether we're living in a simulation, the people don't talk about this too much, is are there loops and are there, are, there, are there bugs that we see creatures? Any, any creature has evolved to do something, and we just don't understand how they do it. 
right? Over billions of, of years in our simulation, something should have evolved to exploit these, these loopholes, these bugs. Maybe there are no bugs, but I kind of doubt it. I've never written code without bugs. What we find instead is, is something like Schrodinger's cat, all right? Now, if this cat could teleport, there would be no problem with Schrodinger's cat. It would just get out of the box. We can also look for inexplicable correlations, communication that must happen outside the universe. For example, if I throw a switch in Detroit, do penguins appear in Antarctica? That would be pretty hard to explain, right, if it happened that way. But what we find instead is I throw a switch in Detroit and make some cars, the penguins disappear. This is the exact opposite of proving that this is a simulation. In a perfect simulation, we can also build perfect simulations inside of it. This is a recursion problem. Uh, it's a very interesting question, because it'll also help you get tip off uh, whether we're living in a simulation or not. So you may have heard the idea of turtles all the way down. If not, uh, quickly just give a read to that story. I'll, I'll, I'll not read it out loud. But it ends in the idea of the reality is a series of turtles. There's an entire stack of turtles that's endless. Where's the bottom? Nobody knows. The stack of turtles is a really interesting idea. So let's think about it in terms of virtual reality that we deal with today. Every time you enter a virtual world, you're essentially pushing a turtle onto your stack. You've added, you've, but however long that stack was, you've made it one longer. And every time you exit the virtual world, you, you pop a turtle from the stack. Does that make sense? All right, so the question is, can we pop more turtles, right? And we don't know if we're in a simulation, but what if we could pop another turtle without just taking off the HMD we just put on? Can we, can we go back even one more layer? You've seen the movie Existence, kind of, uh, explores the same idea. What we effectively need to do is to root reality in order to get out of, of the simulation, to pop it to one level. So let's see if we can do that, theoretically. But while we're thinking about this, what about AR? I talked about VR. What about AR? So at its worst, the worst AR I've ever seen repaints the world. So if you can think of it as repainting the shell of the turtle. It's not replacing it. You're not adding another reality. You're, you're changing the reality around you, right? And that actually may not be a bad thing, because if you know that everything around you is fake, right, there may be things that ring true. And those things that ring true, maybe, maybe the signal-to-noise ratio may be improved. You may be able to see them even better because so many things are painted around you, the things that hold true. And we'll talk about that a little more. But AR, at its best, can also help us understand reality. It can help us understand who's casting the shadows. And if so, it might help us deconstruct reality better and root reality to the point of understanding what the outer world may be that we're living in. So we talked about Plato's cave real briefly at the front. And without going into too much detail, this describes the exact same journey we're talking about. We're sitting in the cave, seeing shadows, and thinking those shadows are real. But they're merely shadows. There's a light source behind us that we don't understand. We have trouble turning around to see what it is. And that's, that's think of that as reality. Is there a process by which we can enlighten ourselves, to see the light source, to see each other for who we really are, and perhaps even to leave the cave, to ascend to sunlight. All right, so that's enlightenment. That's effectively the same idea as popping the turtles. Now, I don't want to be down on VR and up on AR in terms of this. I mean, there is AR that can be distracting and gaudy and, and over too much. I mean, I, I love the hyper-reality video, but it scares the crap out of me. Uh, that, that might be the world. It's, hopefully, it's a, it's a, it's a warning, not a, not a recipe. Uh, and of course, there's VR that can be very introspective and help us understand each other. And so, th so this is not black and white. But the majority of VR is about escapism. And I think the majority of AR, when done well, is about uh, enhancing our experience of the world. So how do we do this? How do we figure out what's most and least real and, and maybe transcend it, things that, that may be more real than what we actually see? Well, what's true in every reality? When we go into 100 different VRs, what do we learn about ourselves? What do we learn about the world? And what do we learn? being out here with each other. What elicits childlike joy? I'm going to argue that childlike joy is a sign of truth. It's a sign of tapping into something that is more real than our daily existence. So when you find that, figure out what that is. And what inspires and drives us? We spend our lives motivated to do these things. What is it about it? There's got to be something that's, that's deeper than just shallow psychological needs. And the flip side is also equally important. What lies do we repeat and live by? what hurts and tricks us, and what addicts us, that stuff can't be real. If it is, it's very sad. So I'm going to decide that that's not real, that the stuff on the left side is real. So at the end of the day, what can we do about this? Well, we don't know. We can't really answer the question 
of whether we're living in a simulation. I'm going to assume we are, and I'm going to try to live my life in a way in which I'm trying to root reality, pop turtle off the stack, and figure out what that outer reality is. And as people who are building, designing AR and VR, my, my suggestion is, whether real life is real or not, we don't know, but design your AR and VR experiences in a way that are the most genuine, that tap at the true human experience, that try to root reality by getting at the core of what existence might be, existence at any turtle. And if you do so, and we all do so, then we may bring ourselves to a point where we can actually pop the stack and get out one level. Thank you very much. Thank you.